Are you looking for the best weight loss diet to start for 2023? In today's video, we will talk about the two most popular low carb, high fat diets, keto and carnivore, give you the basic differences between the two, as well as talk about the decision factors that you should consider when deciding between one or another. If you're new here, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin, this is Alice. Together we've lost over 60 pounds on the keto and carnivore diets. Before we get started, we'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell to make sure you're first to know when we upload a new video. Let's get started. Keto diet. Now by definition, the main premise of the keto diet is to put your body into a state of ketosis. Ketosis is a natural metabolic state where your body is burning fat as its fuel, whether it's dietary fat or body fat, instead of burning carbohydrates. The human body typically uses glucose or sugar as energy. On the keto diet, the goal is to restrict carbohydrates to the body. When the body is not receiving enough carbohydrates to allow it to generate energy from glucose, your body will start burning fat. When the fat stored in your cells is broken down to produce energy, ketones, which is a particular type of acid, will be produced as a side effect in this process. The presence of ketones in the blood and urine are an indicator that a person has entered the state of ketosis. Now, in order to achieve ketosis, the typical macros to aim for are 70% fat, 25% protein, and 5% carbs. But do keep in mind that in terms of calories, one gram of fat is nine calories and one gram of protein is four calories. This means that on a standard 2000 calorie diet, you'd be aiming for approximately 155 grams of fat and 125 grams of protein. Now, as mentioned, ketosis happens naturally when a person reduces their carb consumption to low enough levels, which is typically around 50 grams of net carbs per day. There are other things that can be done to help a person reach the state of ketosis faster or even reach a deeper state of ketosis, such as increasing your physical activity, practicing intermittent fasting, and consuming exogenous ketones such as MCT oils. The main premise of the carnivore diet is to eat meat only. Now on the carnivore diet, it can be primarily red meat, but depending on how strict you are, the diet allows for fish, eggs, poultry, and dairy, technically allowing for any type of animal-based product. What types of meats you allow can also depend on whether you have any food sensitivities in theory, the carnivore diet is a zero carb diet. It is similar to the ketogenic diet and in a way can be seen as a subset of keto, but the diet is fundamentally different and the focus is just on eating meat, whereas the basis of keto is about achieving a state of ketosis. Carnivores don't necessarily aim for ketosis, but ketosis will occur naturally if you're getting enough accompanying fat from the meat that you eat. If you eat too much protein in relation to fat, it may decrease ketone levels. In the carnivore diet, ideally all your fat would come from animal products and some carnivores do add additional butter to their meals. One of the biggest differences between keto and carnivore is that carnivore does not allow for any types of plants or vegetables. Carnivores argue that there is no need to consume plants because of their anti-nutrient properties. Now, whether or not you want to give up vegetables is a personal choice because of their potential anti-nutrient and autoimmune triggers. There are plant compounds that reduce the absorption of nutrients from the digestive system. Examples of anti-nutrients are things like oxalates, which are usually found in leafy greens, which can interfere with your body's ability to absorb calcium. Some other common anti-nutrients are lectins, phytates, and tannins. When it comes to seasonings or sauces, the general idea is that you want to be as minimal as possible. Technically speaking, they shouldn't be included, but it is personal preference depending on the individual's goals, health, and preferences. Some find it easier to stick with a diet if seasonings are added. However, try to avoid seasonings that use sugar. Now for most people, if your primary goal is fat loss or weight loss, then both the keto and carnivore diet will be effective in helping you achieve your weight loss goals. Low carb diets are very popular for a reason and that is because they actually work if you can stick with them in the long term. These diets are not a fad or a short term quick fix. If you see them this way, it is very likely that you will not succeed in keeping the weight off in the long term. Now, if you have a specific health goal that you are trying to achieve, then you have to dig a little more deeper on specifically what health issue you are trying to target. Moving on to the five decision factors that you should consider when picking one or the other. Number one is cost. When it comes to cost, we would say that keto does take the edge here when compared to carnivore. But there is a caveat, and that is that you're doing clean keto with mostly whole foods. The reason I say that keto is cheaper is because vegetables, nuts, and seeds are generally cheaper than meat. On carnivore, you ideally get most of your fat and protein from meat only. On keto, it's okay if you buy leaner sources of protein and make up the fat from other food groups like oils and nuts. There are budget ways to do both diets and mostly depends on what types of cuts of meat that you include. For example, a budget carnivore meal would be ground beef and eggs. A budget keto meal could be eggs, avocado, and salad. So all in all, I would say that keto takes the edge slightly in theory, but it's hard to say for certain because it depends on what you're eating when you're doing keto. If you go out to eat at restaurants, a lot of the cost of keto can be actually be higher than carnivore. Factor number two is your food preferences. 
Now, when you are trying to pick the right diet for yourself, you have to think about whether it includes foods that you like and can prepare easily. If you are a meat lover and you can see yourself eating meat all day, every day, then carnivore may be better for you. If you need a lot of variety, you can't see yourself giving up vegetables or small amounts of fruit or other snacks, then keto may be the better option. A part of it does come down to how much flexibility you need. For some people, they actually prefer a diet that calls for very specific foods so that there is no decision fatigue. For example, if you are doing BBBE on carnivore, all you can eat is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. There is no gray area on what you can and cannot eat. Other people don't like this degree of restriction in their diet and must have some flexibility in their diet for it to work for them. There really is no judgment here because we all have different personalities and lifestyles. If you are on a diet where you can't have any of your favorite foods or foods that resemble your favorite foods, then it can be pretty hard to sustain in the long run. For example, if you are somebody that gets sugar cravings and you may want to start with keto because there are a lot more dessert alternatives that can be made to fit with the keto macros. Factor number three is family, social, and lifestyle suitability. Now the next decision factor is what I call lifestyle suitability. This is probably one of the most important factors in picking a diet that can sustain you in the long run. And that is the question, can the diet you choose suit your lifestyle? If you cannot function and live your life on the diet that you've picked, then it will not last. Some questions to ask yourself include, can the diet accommodate your family's needs? Can the diet accommodate with your work schedule? Can the diet accommodate with your travel schedule? Can the diet accommodate to your social needs? Even if you are a very high willpower type of person and you are one of the mentally toughest people that you know, these factors will still play into account. I actually think that when it comes to dieting long-term, motivation is actually quite overrated. Yes, you do need motivation in the beginning to get started and commit, but in the long-term, it's all about building habits that will last. And when it comes to habits, the environment you're in is very important. If you if you are somebody that does not cook and prepare your meals every day, then carnivore may not be a suitable option for you. With keto, there are just a lot more options available for eating out. If you are somebody that loves to cook, but likes very simple meals that don't take a ton of time, just like Kevin and I do, then you could do better on the carnivore diet. Generally speaking, keto is a little bit more socially acceptable and mainstream, which means that access to information is higher. There's more keto cookbooks. There's more YouTube videos on keto. There's more recipe blogs that have keto recipes. And there are generally more influencers that promote this way of living. Also with keto, there is a little bit more data and research that has been done. On the flip side, carnivore is a newer diet that I would say that's emerged in popularity over the last few years because of people like Joe Rogan. Nothing wrong with that. I think there is a great little YouTube community of people that are carnivore, but relative to keto, it is a little bit more niche, which means that there is a little bit less access to information available and a little bit more experimentation, a little more of going against the grain and having to stand up for your beliefs when it comes to social settings and dealing with your family and friends. Factor number four is related to health issues and healing. If you're seeking a diet for weight loss, but you have autoimmune issues, chronic inflammation, pain, or food sensitivities, and you're looking for healing on top of the weight loss benefits, then I would recommend the carnivore diet. With carnivore, you get as restrictive as you want and be as experimental as you want when it comes to healing certain issues. For example, I used the carnivore diet to heal my eczema, and I did that by starting with beef, butter, and salt, and eventually added more things to my diet. I listened to my body and I saw how my body reacted to certain food. What I realized is that I do best when I eat minimal seasonings and I occasionally react to shellfish. Factor number five, addressing your bad habits. Factor number five is picking a diet that can work for you, not against you, by addressing it or improving any bad eating habits. The purpose of going a diet is really to replace unhealthy habits with healthy habits. Bad habits are things like not planning what you're gonna eat, eating out for convenience, buying unhealthy or processed foods, binge eating or portion control, mindless boredom eating or sweet tooth, or having sugar addiction. Now, both keto and carnivore can help with a lot of these things with slight nuances. If you have a tendency to opt for poor food choices out of convenience, Convenience is something that is required for your lifestyle. I would say that keto is a little easier to eat out. There's more flexibility for some processed foods. If you have a carb addiction or sugar addiction and have a hard time with portion control, I do recommend the carnivore diet over keto because you're essentially eliminating any sweet alternatives. Even sweets made with almond flour and stevia can still trigger sweet cravings and it is possible that even low sugar fruits can trigger your sweet cravings. I think the best way to handle carb or sugar addiction is to just completely eliminate anything with sugar or that closely resembles sugar. The best diet is one that you can maintain long-term and doesn't make you feel like you're dieting because dieting can create an unhealthy obsession with food and that negative relationship is not going to be sustainable in the long run. 
Now, when it comes to our general recommendation, if you are currently on the standard American diet, then I would actually recommend starting with keto and for maximum weight loss benefit, incorporate intermittent fasting into your diet. Then once you are fat adapted and sustain keto for a solid amount of time, you want to change things up and you can see yourself doing low carb for the long term, you may want to consider transitioning to carnivore. I personally think that this is the most sustainable way because it's the least amount of shock to your body and your gut will have time to adapt a little bit more. Now, when we first started low carb, we went from the standard American diet of like 300 grams a day to 50 grams a day, and it was a huge shock to our bodies. I actually developed all these crazy keto flu symptoms and felt super, super sick. And we all hear about keto flu and read about it, but I was actually very tripped out and also a little bit scared of what was happening to my body while I was doing it. Now for a majority of people, this will be the natural path that they take. And I also think that it's the one that makes the most sense. However, I do think there are a couple of different paths that a person could go down. It is possible for a person to start keto and realize that low carb diets are not for them and will never be and they try to go on another diet and that's completely fine or they start keto and they decide that they're going to stick with it forever or they start keto and reach a plateau and get bored and want to transition to carnivore for even more optimal health if you enjoyed our video today please hit that like and subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to make sure you're first to know when we upload a new video or recipe let us know in the comments down below which diet either keto or carnivore you're leaning towards doing in 2023 until next time